In chapter 6, we're going to look at ionic bonding. Ionic bonding is when we take an element and we either add or subtract electrons to form a charge. Once those charges are formed, we call them ions. And because we have, if we have a positive and a negative ion, they're going to attract to each other and form an ionic compound. And so we're going to be looking at the charges they make, how they come together to form ionic compounds. We're also going to name those ionic compounds and talk about polyatomic ions, so many atoms that come together to form uh, a, a charged species. We're going to talk about some of the properties, including solubility, which is whether or not it dissolves in water. And we'll talk about how we know if a ionic compound is soluble or insoluble, whether it dissolves or it doesn't dissolve. We'll be able to balance chemical reactions. We'll talk about a mole and also be able to write dissociation reactions. So how do those ionic compounds break apart when they dissolve in water? From this, we're going to talk about precipitation reactions. And precipitation reactions are when we have two ionic compounds dissolved in water, we add them together, and we make a new solid. Ionic compounds form between metals and nonmetals. So remember, the metals are on the left-hand side of the periodic table, and nonmetals are on the upper right-hand side of the periodic table. Metals like to form positive charges. Nonmetals like to form negative charges, and those opposite charges attract to each other. And we can tell if it's an ionic compound because it's a metal and a nonmetal. Ions, again, are atoms that have an unequal number of protons and electrons. Because protons are positively charged and electrons are negatively charged, if they're equal, we have a neutral atom. If they are unequal, depending on which is larger, we have more protons, it's going to be positively charged. If we have more electrons, it is going to be negatively charged. If it is positively charged, we call that a cation. If it is negatively charged, we call it an anion. And a good way to remember this is because the Cations are positively charged, or you can think of it as a plusy cat. All atoms want to achieve a full octet. They want to have eight electrons in their outermost shell or orbital. If we're forming ions, the atoms are either gaining or losing electrons in order to get to that eight electrons in their outer shell. If we look at sodium, sodium has one electron in that third shell. If it loses that electron, then the second shell has a total of eight, which is the goal of our atom. If we look at chlorine, there are seven electrons in its outermost shell. If it gains an electron, then it has eight. When sodium loses its electron, it becomes positively charged. Chlorine can gain that lost electron and become negatively charged. Because they have opposite charges, they are attracted to each other. So how do we determine the charge of the ion? How many valence electrons does it have? If we look at the neutral atom, we can find, based on its group number on the periodic table, how many valence electrons. We have to figure out how many electrons need to be added or lost to get to that full octet. If it's a metal, it's going to lose electrons. If it is a nonmetal, it's going to gain electrons because they want to go the easiest way. Nonmetals have more valence electrons, so they want to gain a couple to become eight. Metals only have a couple valence electrons, so they want to lose them to become eight. Let's look at the valence electrons for each of these elements. 
when we're looking at valence electrons, we write the symbol as if it is in a box. So the box, on each side of the box, you add electrons, one to each side, before you start adding more. So let's look at lithium. Lithium on the periodic table is in the first column. So it will have one valence electron. It's going to want to lose that valence electron, which means that it's going to become a plus one charge because it will have one more proton than electron. If we look at beryllium, it's going to lose two electrons and become a plus two charge. Boron will lose three electrons and be a plus three charge. Carbon has four valence electrons. Now it could either, because it's this in the middle, it could either lose four or gain four. So carbon could be a plus four or a minus four, depending on if it is gaining or losing. If we look at nitrogen. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, so it is going to be easier for it to gain three more. So it is going to have a negative three charge. Oxygen has six valence electrons. So it will want to gain two more to become a negative two charge. Fluorine has seven valence electrons. It will want to gain one more electron and so gaining that one electron would give it a negative one charge. If we look at neon, neon has eight valence electrons. It doesn't want to gain or lose any, so its charge is zero. So do you see a pattern? If we're on the left-hand side of the periodic table, it's going to be positively charged. If we're on the right-hand side of the periodic table, is going to be negatively charged. And depending on the column it falls on in, it tells us if it's going to be, what that charge is going to be. So if we look at the periodic table, just like the elements we did look at, based on the periodic table numbers, tells us the number of valence electrons it's going to have. It's got one valence electron, form a plus one charge. If it has two valence electrons, it's going to be a plus two. Three valence electrons, plus three. Four is either plus or minus four. Now once we get to five, now we're going to start adding electrons instead of losing them. So five has to gain three electrons, so it's a negative three. If it's in the six column, it has to gain two electrons because it has six to get to eight, so it's a negative two. If it has seven, it's going to gain one. Our eighth column is neutral. If we're talking about the middle part of the periodic table, we need more information in order to figure out its charge. So the group number helps us decide what the charge of our element is going to be. And all of the elements in that same group are going to have equal charge. Cations are always metal because they want to lose electrons, become more positively charged. Anions 
are always nonmetals because they want to gain electrons to become negatively charged. Predict what the ions for the following atoms will be based on their position on the periodic table. Pause the video and determine the charge. Sulfur is in group 6. Because it's in group 6, it needs to gain 2 electrons. So sulfur would be a negative 2 charge. Silicon is in group 4. So this could be either a positive 4 or a negative 4. Magnesium is in column 2. So it is going to want to lose 2 electrons and become positively charged with a plus two charge. Chlorine wants to gain one electron. It's got seven valence electrons. Because it gains an electron, it becomes a negative one charge. Now please notice that when it's only a plus one or a minus one, we just write the sign and not a number. You may also notice that for the charge, the number comes before the positive sign. This is just convention the way chemists do it. Sodium is in column one, so it is going to want to lose one electron and become positively charged because now it has more protons than electrons. Aluminum is in column three becomes a plus three. Argon is in the eighth column. It has eight valence electrons, so it will gain no charge. It, does, it wants to be neutral. Phosphorus, column five, needs to gain three electrons to have eight. Another way to think about it is it needs to move three boxes over to the noble gas.